All right. Love to all you people. Yesterday's video was about Minerva Arts. And I got a comment from Jacob Pacioretty, which said that debate has been around for a long time. And the thing about debate, what, there's something about debate that, that seems insufficient. And so I could see where debate is a form of Minerval Arts. The thing about debate that is insufficient is that I want to see I want to see the ad hominem, right? Because a lot of times in debate you do an ad hominem and it somehow um, is considered invalid, which you know it can be invalid depending on your goals. But if your goal is to cultivate wisdom, then the focus of the Minerval Arts is the transformation of the human. So that's, uh, that's what I'm interested in is not just disagreement, but also the kind of disagreement that's pointing at the person and pointing at them and what they're doing wrong. And that's, I mean, that's what is missing in our world, right? Where two people can go into an arena and both people are willing to give and receive criticism about their character. Like, show me where that's happening. And then I raise my hand and say, because you lead by example, I say, hey, I'm willing to receive criticism about my character and I, I do that, but what I would like, what I'm missing is, is a counterpart in the Minerval Arts is if you are giving criticism about my character, I would like to be able to give criticism about your character. And that makes it even more interesting, right? Because when people pr provide a criticism about my character, what that is is they are, when they're being honest, they're sharing their model of me, which is a reflection of a model which they think is, is good and ideal. And so I can then point back at the model which they think is good and ideal, and I can say, you know that there is a risk the risk there's a risk you are taking with your model right um, about what is good and ideal and it that is shaping your character so this character development process i think is is important because the goal the goal of minerva arts is to cultivate wisdom and my claim would be is that the only way to cult well not the only way that there is a way to cultivate wisdom that is faster than every other way. So that's the claim. And I'm trying to point at the way, right? I'm, I'm trying to discover it myself. And then as I find it, point at it and say, hey guys, it's over here. I know a way. You want to come try it with me? Come on. And then also what's interesting is like it should produce good fruit, right? Like when you participate, the people that you live with should notice that, hey, you are changing. And then, you know, that's something that, for example, the people around you might say, maybe we should be like paying for this because it's actually really good it's helping you become a better person and it's helping our family become better so that would be the producing of good fruit the production of good fruit and there's a lot of like ancillary benefits that are invaluable <laughs> to every to our species 
So I'm also paying attention to what's happening on Jacob Facciaretti's YouTube channel because he has a he has a platform like he has over he has nearly 700 subscribers and then I'm also paying attention to Grimgris his YouTube channel because he has a platform and he has over 700 subscribers I've got 53 and so they are providing a platform for me and I appreciate that um, and they respect me to one degree or another, and I appreciate that. But what's happening over there in these places is right now there's, there is a, there are disagreements, like about ideas, and then what I would say even more important is there are disagreements about the ideal character. What is the ideal character? But I don't see anybody raising their hand and saying please provide criticism to me nobody's doing that um, so yeah Minerva Arts can be the means by which we discuss ideas like how can we produce the most good fruit possible right we can discuss those ideas and then we can also discuss who are the, what is the character that we want to be making these kinds of decisions, right? So first you can say, we, there's these kinds of decisions that need to be made. And then we can say, well, what's the ideal character for making those kinds of decisions? So that's the conversation that needs to happen. And it's related to this it's going to always point back to the person right the person who has a model about what an ideal character is and once you start criticizing the model about what an ideal character is you are essentially criticizing the person and that person can become defensive and when they become defensive um, it is it is a indicator of the lack of wisdom within that person right and then I would also say that the wisdom that I'm pointing at is a quality that we want and some characters making some kinds of decisions in order to produce the most fruit the most good fruit possible so I want to try to integrate my ideas with other people's ideas uh, so that we can cooperate and produce the most good fruit possible. Meanwhile, yeah, so, you know, I have criticisms for Jacob, and I have criticisms for Mark, and I have criticisms for Paul, but there's, there's no reason for me to give criticism unless they are wanting to receive criticism. And my my understanding is it doesn't seem like they want to receive criticism because I actually I engage them privately to one degree or another and they haven't seemed receptive and definitely not inviting and you know and that's just like the the most peaceful and normal way to give criticism is to provide it in private but what I'm advocating for is I want us to be willing to provide criticism in public and even do it live, right? And make it make a league and a competition, right? That's the kind of thing I want to do. And I want to make sure we're doing it in the right spirit um, where we want to produce the most good fruit possible. So it's not happening and I want it to happen. And that's it's related to my goals. I want, I want, I want peace on earth, and I want all people to have access to clean water, and I want good sense making. It's all connected to the human resource problem, which is connected to our collective inability to identify people who can take on 
the most important responsibilities, <laughs> right? We're not good at that. We don't. Even, we haven't figured out how to do that. And so that's what I'm, you know, it's what I'm aiming at. And as you step back, it all comes back down to, hey, am I doing error correction? How can I facilitate error correction within myself and within others? And uh, if we can get good at that, we can actually identify the people who are doing the best job at doing error correction, correcting their character, improving their character. So, you know, thy will be done. Um, is it what I want? Or is it what God wants? That's what I ask myself. That's what um, that's what I think is good to ask yourself. Because I see many people where I am skeptical that they are serving God. And they believe they are serving God. And this is, this is, um, so it's a good question that we should be constantly asking ourselves, is remembering God and asking ourselves, is this God's will or is this Gavin's will or whoever your name is? So, peace.